This is part 23 of Angular CLI tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss compiling Angular applications, differences between ng-serve and ng-build commands, and finally, producing builds both for development and production environments. In the last two videos in this video series, that is, in parts 21 and 22, we discussed ng-serve command. This command builds and serves the application from memory for faster development experience ng-serve command does not write the build files to the desk, so we cannot use it for deploying our application on a different server. For example, if we want to deploy our application to a test, staging or even production server, we cannot use ng-serve command. For this, we have to use a different command and that is the ng-build command. Here is the routing demo project that we have been working with so far in this video series. Now let's build this project using the ng-build command. So let's flip over to command prompt and we are already in the project folder. Let's use this command ng-build. At this point, if I press the enter key, this command is going to create a folder with the name dist in this routing demo project folder and then copies all the build files into that dist folder. The question that comes to our mind is, why is the folder named dist and not anything else? The output folder is named as dist because that is what is specified in our Angular CLI configuration file. Notice this property right here. The out dir property is set to dist and when I hover the mouse over this property, look at what it says. The output directory for build results. So anytime we build our project using the ng build command, it's going to create this folder called dist within our application project folder and then copies all the build files into that folder. So let's go ahead and execute this ng build command. Build completed. So now if we look at our project folder, notice we have this folder called dist and if we go into that, we have all the files that are required for deploying our application to a different server. Here we have the favorite icon and then we have the cliff icons as we are using bootstrap and then we have our index.html which is our application host page and then those five bundles along with their source map files. So by default, this ng-build command does a development build and not a production build. The development build is not optimized for production use. We typically use the development build for testing. It's easy to debug a development build because it contains source map files as you can see right here. Now if we want to deploy this build to another server, maybe to our testing server, all we have to do is copy the contents of this test folder to a folder on the server. We'll discuss deployment in detail in our upcoming videos. Look at the sizes of the bundles the development build has produced. The inline bundle is 6 kilobytes, main bundle is 18, polyfills 212, styles 129 and the biggest one is the vendor bundle which is roughly around 2.2 MB. Now this is a development build, so these bundles are completely unoptimized, meaning none of the performance optimization techniques like ahead of time compilation, minification, uglification and tree shaking, none of them are implemented. Now when we do a production build, the bundles that are produced by the production build tend to be significantly less in size compared with the bundles that we have with a development build. We'll do a production build in just a bit and we'll see the differences in sizes as far as these bundles are concerned. To produce a development build, we can simply use this command ng-build without any options or we can explicitly specify that we want a development build by using this option dash dash dev. You might have already guessed by now to produce a production build all we have to do is instead of dash dash dev option we have to use dash dash prod option. So this command is going to produce a build that is completely optimized. So all the performance optimization techniques like ahead of time compilation minification, uglification, tree shaking will be implemented. So the bundles that the production build produces, the sizes of those bundles will be significantly less than the size of the bundles produced by the development build. And we'll look at that in action in just a bit. There we go. Our production build is completed. 
on the top we have our development build bundles and on the bottom here we have our production build bundles now if you look at this inline bundle here which our production build has produced look at its size is just 1.45 kilobytes now if you look at the same bundle within our development build it is 5.83 kilobytes and if you look at our largest bundle which is the vendor bundle with the development build the size is 2.31 MB whereas with our production build it is just 313 kilobytes when we executed this ng build command the second time it has deleted the dist folder that we already had recreated it and then copied the production build files into it so within this dist folder at the moment we have our production build so when we compare this production build with the development build that we have done a couple of minutes ago three things stand out the first one is the bundle sizes the bundle sizes produced by the production build are significantly less than the bundle sizes produced by the development build the second one is with the production build we don't get source map files because typically on a production server we don't debug our application so by default the production build does not produce the source map files but if you do want source map files there is a way to generate them with the production build we'll discuss how to do that in our upcoming videos and the third thing is with the styles notice the styles in a production bundle are in a dot css file whereas in the development build they are present in a dot js file so in addition to these three differences there are several other differences between a production build and a development build we'll discuss those differences in detail in our next video before we conclude let's quickly recap the differences between ng serve and ng build first ng serve this command compiles and serves the application from memory it does not write the build files to the disk we typically use it to run the application on our local development machine we cannot use it for deploying the build to another server for example testing staging a production server now ng build this command compiles the application to the dist folder we can use it to produce both development and production builds typically used to deploy the application on another server to produce a development build either use ng build or explicitly specify that you want a development build by using dash dash dev option to produce a production build use dash dash prod option on our next slide we have our development and production builds side by side as we already discussed there are three things that stand out between these two builds production build file sizes are significantly less than the dev build file sizes production build does not generate source map files and finally production build extracts css from global styles onto css file instead of js there are several other differences as well we'll discuss those differences in detail in our next video thank you for listening and have a great day